brand new changes are coming to Trickmania. These changes might be a little bit controversial or not. I will give you nothing but the facts so you can establish your very own opinion. And then at the end of the video, I will come in with my personal opinion as well. So about a week ago, Trickmania's official Twitter account put out this tweet detailing what's going to happen with the matchmaking scene. Now we're going to go through it, both the good things and the bad things. So let's just jump straight into it. With the start of the new year, Trackmania released a brand new campaign to play. The Winter 2023 campaign with 25 five new tracks utilizing a plethora of new blocks. Traditionally, matchmaking has been played on these maps, and so the tradition continued. Matchmaking this season has been very active, partially due to the great reception of the campaign, but also due to the new skins you can earn from playing ranked. I have a video on that if you missed on how to get these skins. The maps you played in ranked were categorized in different map pools. As a bronze player, you would play on maps 1 through 10, also known as the white and green maps. When you got to silver, you would compete on the previous as well as the blue and red maps. And when you hit that gold, all 25 of the campaign maps open up to you. As in you had a chance to compete on map 01 or map 25, they were all eligible to be played. With the new changes Trackmania has implemented, the map pools have changed as follows. Bronze players will remain on the white and the green maps. However, when you reach silver, you only complete on the blue to black maps, that is map 11 through 25. You will no longer have access to compete on maps 1 through 10. Once you have succeeded in climbing to gold, the map pools change completely away from the campaign to the pro Trackmania World Tour maps, and they become the new competition ground. These maps are made for pro players to compete on during the World Cup and Grand League. However, these maps have slight modifications to make parts of them easier. This does not mean that the maps are easy though they are by every sense of the word difficult. But why? Why make this drastic change? Let's take a look. The Trackmania World Tour is just around the corner. This means Trackmania Esports is about to kick off. I'll make a video very soon detailing just what this means, where and when to watch it, and what it's all about. But why is it relevant? Let's take a look at some very interesting parts of the event. First of all, Trackmania has made ranked game mode the introduction to Trackmania as an esport. You will climb your way in the ranked game mode to become eligible to compete in the regional tournaments, which could lead to the Challenger League, to the Grand League and finally to the World Championship. Now because Nadeo is making ranked matchmaking the stepping stone to getting into the professional esports scene, they have chosen to incorporate these competitive esports maps into the map pool. Even furthermore, they've incentivized pro players to compete in the ranked game mode. So how have they done this? Well, the rulebook for Trackmania World Tour is very long, but if we take a look at this very specific part, we can see the point distributions for the seasons. As can be seen, there are points to be gained based on your team's ranking. These points and what they mean are of no importance for us right now. All you need to know is that pro players are now incentivized to be playing this ranked matchmaking. Moreover, Trackmania Esport has changed its format to a 2 versus 2 format, and the ranked matchmaking queue will reflect that. The game mode will be changed from a 3 versus 3 to a 2 versus 2 format on January 21st, 2023. What do I have to say about all this? And let's get into it. First of all, I want to say that I'm all for ranked matchmaking being the introduction to the Esport sports scene. I'm all for the pros being incentivized to play the ranked matchmaking game mode. It's great, especially because the casual players that are trying to strive to become professionals have the option to play against them if they reach a high enough rank. But I do want to talk about the new map pools and how they've introduced them. Let me walk you through this from a perspective of a new player. You open rank for the first time and compete against like-minded bronze players on the first 10 maps of the campaign. These maps are short and sweet, easy to learn, but hard to master. Once you battle your way through this rank and you finally hit silver, you get thrown into 15 brand new maps. All of the ones are significantly harder than the first 10, especially if you jump from playing let's say map 5 and jump to a competitive match on map 21. But okay, you take a break from ranked because you can at least train the maps in the campaign. You grind the last 15 maps in the campaign, maybe you get author times on all the maps, jump back into rank and start pushing towards that gold rank. Finally that gold rank hits. Now what awaits? 10 new maps from a completely different campaign, all of which are significantly harder than any map on the campaign. So much harder that me, a player with more than 4,000 hours in the game, still have issues completing them regularly. Not only are these maps incredibly difficult, you are now thrown into a player pool in which the other players have been playing and training these maps since the start of the season. You are, and I'm sorry to say this, going to get mega stomped repeatedly until you sit down, open the the 
world tour campaign, given that you've paid the game subscription, and train them to the point of being playable. Now, this isn't impossible. You can definitely learn the maps and become somewhat consistent on them, but it will take time and not just an hour or two. I'd say about 10 to 50 hours, depending on how good you are at the game already. Now, my worry is that the new players will simply not want to grind that much as just an entrance requirement to play the game mode. The grind seen from the outside is way too big, especially if you're a casual player that just tries to climb the ranks for fun. These jumps in difficulty in the map pool is incredibly steep, and the TMWC maps are difficult to the point where I'm worried that most players will just give up on playing them. But these are just my two cents. What are yours? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Consider throwing me a sub and watch one of these other two videos you might like. Bye-bye.